Hi, my name is Mike. I'm an adventurer and a dad. And in my ongoing mission to take my family to really cool places here in the West, for spring break, we rented uh, a van. We sort of took a 180 from the four wheel drive, bumpy road, um, rooftop tent thing, and we rented a two wheel drive van, a Winnebago Solus. And uh, you'll see more about that in future videos, but spoiler alert, it was awesome. We loved it. But on that trip, even though it was van life and even though it was two-wheel drive and we weren't in the Tacoma, we did log some miles on dirt roads. Now, I don't mean just tootling down some little country lane to get to a campsite. Uh, we spent all day on some dirt roads on this trip, all by ourselves in some fairly remote locations. It's okay to take chances, just be prepared. Now, even if you don't consider yourself to be an overlander, uh, somebody who's like an off-road adventurer and going out in the middle of nowhere, if you're doing things like mountain biking and camping and exploring and going to ghost towns, chances are you're going to find yourself on these dirt roads. And even if you have a car, a two-wheel drive car, an all-wheel drive car, or a van, there are some things that you really should take with you in order to be prepared for any kind of vehicle-related situation on the road. So case in point, on the last morning of our trip, we woke up and found that the place that we decided to camp the night before uh, was pretty sandy. And as a result, we tried to pull forward to get out of that spot. The tires just dug right in. It didn't end up being a big deal because we had everything that we needed to get ourselves out and back on the road again. So fortunately, Mark at Rack to Rome here in Reno has your back. He started carrying some basic recovery gear in addition to all the other things that you need to carry all your overlanding and, and adventure gear on your truck. And even if you aren't doing gnarly off-roading, any adventurous soul will eventually find that they need some of this gear. You could depend on somebody else having it to, to save your neck, or you could have it yourself and not depend on anybody else. And maybe you could help somebody else along the way. So let's head down there and I want to show you nine things that I think Anybody who spends any amount of time on dirt roads adventuring, particularly van lifers, should always carry in their vehicle. So really quick, before we get into the recovery equipment, I wanna thank Mark from Rack to Rome for letting me shoot here again. Um, and if you wanna talk about any of this stuff or you have any questions about this recovery gear, or if you wanna look at it, um, come down to Rack to Rome anytime. Um, but particularly next Saturday, uh, April 9th, from two to six, we're gonna have another Overlander meet up here in the parking lot, and I'll have all this stuff here, and I'll have my trailer, and if you wanna talk about any of this stuff or ask any questions, come down for that. Last time there were tacos. Nobody wants to miss tacos. So first of all, if you only carry one thing, and by one thing I mean three things, here are the three things that I would always recommend that you have on a dirt road or any kind of backcountry type scenario. <clears throat> First, a pair of gloves. If you get stuck, you're gonna be moving rocks, you're gonna be moving max tracks, you're gonna be potentially pulling cable. Uh, you gotta protect your hands or it's gonna make it really difficult to do all of the rest of the things. Um, the next most basic thing is gonna be a shovel. Now, they got this pretty simple shovel here. It's made out of metal. It looks like it'd be really hard to break. You don't have to have a super expensive shovel that's made out of unobtainium. Just a plain old regular shovel is gonna be good enough for getting you out of a sticky situation on a dirt road. Now, the third most simple thing is gonna be a set of max tracks. At least two of these max tracks. Um, if you're in a two wheel drive vehicle, you're gonna have um, only two wheels that are driving. So basically all you can really use is two, although it could be argued that you could use uh, some for the rear or the front, depending on what vehicle you're in, um, but at minimum, two max tracks. Now, I used these recently on our last trip to get um, our two-wheel drive van out of some sand, and they worked perfectly well. But between the gloves and the shovel and the max tracks, that was all we needed to get out of that situation. Go, yeah! <laughs> I got glasses. I got sunglasses. I'd be cooler than you. So for level two, if things get really sticky and the max tracks and the shovel and the gloves aren't working for you, you're going to need to take other measures. So you need to find another vehicle. And 
if and when you find another vehicle, you're going to need some way to attach that vehicle to your vehicle to pull you out. Now, we came across an RV that was stuck in the sand in Death Valley a number of years ago, and I had what was needed to get him out. Um, but if he had had what, everything that he needed to get himself out, then any vehicle that came along would have done. So here's what you need. First of all, you need a snatch strap, a kinetic strap. That's what this is. Um, Mark carries these ones from um, Iron Man 4x4. Any, there's a number of different people that make this, companies that make this. Um, this is a, um, a wide strap with loops at both ends and it stretches. So even if you have a big RV, um, a little SUV will be able to pull you out with this. You get up some speed and it engages and stretches and then all that energy gets transferred and it can pull, pull the bigger vehicle out. Um, now, if you have one of these, great. How are you gonna attach it to the vehicle? You can't put it around the trailer ball. You know that, right? Don't do that. So you need some way to attach it to the vehicle. Um, one of the best and most safest ways to do that is with a soft shackle. I use this one, it's a gator jaw soft shackle from Bubba Rope. Um, Mark carries uh, these soft shackles from Iron Man 4x4. They're all made out of the basic same material, same basic design. They're all really good. They're all really well recommended. The ones Mark carries are big and burly um, with 170, no, 17.5 kilogram brake strength. So these are, these are big time, these will work for your van. Um, and then generally, sometimes you're gonna need a way to attach that soft shackle to the vehicle. Now, um, the easiest thing to do, almost all vehicles, particularly most vans, are gonna have a trailer hitch in the rear, a receiver hitch in the rear, but usually there's nothing in them or there's a bike rack in them. Um, but I would recommend carrying at least one of these. This is uh, a receiver pin. And so you can, basically you can stick the end of that um, kinetic strap into the receiver, put the pin in, lock it in place. And this is totally strong enough to haul that vehicle out. Um, one step above this, one thing that's a little bit better is a receiver hitch shackle like this. So this has a big solid steel block here. This one's particularly nice because you can put it in this way or you can put it in that way. There's two pins there. And then there's a bow shackle on this end, which will let you attach the snatch strap or pretty much anything else. So I would recommend if you don't have anything in your receiver, throw one of these in there and drive around with this in there all the time. Well, when you're adventuring. So that's level two. If the max tracks don't work, then the snatch strap surely will. Hopefully. Did you hear about the two guys who stole a, a calendar? They each got six months. Boy, I tell you what, if you want to fill a retail store with customers, all you got to do is set up and start shooting a video inside there. <laughs> Place is packed now. Anyway, so the third level of recovery gear debatably should be the second or maybe even the first, but there's no guarantee that this stuff will actually get you unstuck. So I put it as third. Basically what you should carry is a set of tire deflators. Um, if you can lower the air pressure in your tire by a lot, you know, if you go down from like 50 to 20 or, you know, 35 to 20 or 15, the tire will spread out and get more traction and you might be able to drive out of stuff. Uh, when we got our van stuck, um, I considered trying that, but then I didn't have the tire deflators. So I'd have to just like poke a little uh, stick in there. I didn't have a compressor, so we'd have to limp back somewhere. Um, but so the second thing that you need in this is a compressor like this. This one that Mark carries is from Iron Man 4x4 and it just plugs into your battery and can pump up your tires pretty quickly. It comes with the um, cables, it comes with the hose, it comes with an inflator so that you can just, it's everything you need to just plug it in and fill up your tires. And it's nice, it's portable, you can take it away from your vehicle to somebody else's vehicle to fill that up. Um, but something like this is really helpful. Other companies make this, of course ARB makes some. This is pretty similar to the one that Four Wheel Parts sells under the Smitty Built brand. Um, but I've used one like, just like this for years and they work great. <clears throat> and then the last thing, of course, you need, you may as well have it. If you have the, if you have the compressor, you should get a tire patch kit. You can get these in any hardware store or auto parts store. It consists of um, these rubber plugs that are like long, noodly, rubbery plugs and uh, 
an applicator where you stick the plug in the applicator and you ram it through the hole in the tire and it seals it right up. Pretty likely if you're driving dirt roads that you're gonna get a flat eventually. So you may as well have stuff like this in addition to a spare tire. That's it, nine things that you should definitely be carrying with you if you're doing any kind of dirt road travel, adventure travel, particularly if you're in a van or an RV or any kind of two wheel drive vehicle. If you wanna see any of this gear that I mentioned today, just come down to Rack to Rome. Uh, Mark's got it all here. And if you wanna see or talk about even more options, come down here to the store on Saturday, April 9th. Uh, people are gonna be set up here in the parking lot again. We're gonna have another Overlander meetup out there. And there'll be a million different versions of all of the stuff that I've shown here. You can just walk around and ask people what they have and learn uh, something new. So hope to see you there. Thanks for watching, happy trails, bye-bye.